Hey everyone, so today we're going to look at lesson 7.2, which is graphing quadratic functions. In the previous lesson, you should have learned all about the different parts of a quadratic function, like x-intercepts, y-intercepts, the vertex, the axis of symmetry. And now we're going to find out how to actually graph those quadratic functions ourselves with the help of technology. So the first thing that we can do is look at each of the forms of a quadratic function and how some of those pieces help us to find key features of that function. So if we look at the first one, you can see here on the left, it's called standard form, okay? And in standard form, the C value actually tells us quite a bit. The C value tells us the y-intercept. So as an example, if you see the function on the right in example number one, we can see that the C value in that function is negative five, therefore that is our y-intercept. And we can actually go ahead, if we want to, and plot that point right now at zero, negative five. Okay. The A is also important, and we'll talk about that after we look at the other two functions. So the vertex form naturally helps us to find the vertex. That's why it's called that, so I'm gonna highlight that. You may wanna underline it or circle it in your notes. And the h value and the k value, if we put them together as an ordered pair, h comma k, that gives us the vertex of our graph. Now, an easy way to remember it might be that we take the opposite sign of the h. So if it's a minus, then it would, our h value is actually positive. And if it's a plus, then our h value is actually negative. So let's go ahead and look at the one below it, um, example three here that has a vertex form. So you can see that we have the, these values here are H and K, they're highlighted, and we write them just like that. But remember, the one inside the parentheses, the H is opposite. So since it's a minus five, our H value is a positive five. And the K value sign remains the same, which is negative six. So that is our vertex of this graph, and we can go ahead and plot it at five, negative six. That's at least one point we know on that graph. So there's always something to be gained from these different forms, even if it's only one point. And the third form that we can see up here is called factor form. And we learned about factoring in our last unit, so it shouldn't be unfamiliar. But what might be a little unfamiliar is what can we get from that? What is important from that particular one? What do you think the R1 and the R2 stand for in this particular problem? They stand for the roots. And if you've forgotten what that means, roots are the x-intercepts. Okay? So in this case, R1 is a root and R2 is a root. Many times we will have two roots, but occasionally we might have one or no roots. So keep that in mind. And they are also, just like with the vertex, if they are inside parentheses, we want to use opposite signs. Okay, so let's look at an example of that. I'll scroll down a tiny bit to the one below it, example two. So looking at that, we have minus five in here, but our root is not negative. Our root is actually positive, opposite sign. So five comma zero. Remember, roots are x-intercepts, so the five needs to go first because it's an x-intercept, not a y-intercept. And then our other root, it looks like a plus two, but we're gonna put negative two. Opposite signs, opposite, opposite. And then of course you can plot them at five zero and negative two zero. That one gave us two points, that's nice, but we still don't know the vertex or the y-intercept of that graph, okay? Now the last thing that our functions can tell us, and remember guys, these are just three different ways to write the same equation. You can write it in vertex form, factor form, or standard form. But you'll notice they all have something in common. They all have an A value. And what does the A value tell us? It tells us a lot about the function, like whether it gets really wide or really narrow, but one thing that is very obvious is that whether it's negative or positive. So for instance, if A is less than zero, that would mean that A is negative. All numbers that are less than zero are negative. That means the parabola 
opens up. And this is what that looks like. You may want to draw a little picture. Okay. And if A is greater than zero, that means A is positive, then the parabola opens. Oh, oh sorry. Small error going back. This should be opens down. If it's negative, it opens down. <laughs> Silly me. Opens down, and it would look like this. You may want to erase. Parabola opens up if the A value is positive, and that would look something like this. Sorry for the mix-up. Make sure this is what you have down. If A is negative, then the parabola opens down. If A is positive, the parabola opens up. So you can see, looking at example one there, our A value is 1. And if it's a positive 1, then that means our graph opens up. And you may want to label that that negative 5 is the y-intercept. Even though I know we've already plotted it, you may want to include it. Okay. Now how do we get the rest of the graph? That's where technology is actually a little bit important. So I'm going to show you how to do it on the Inspire calculator. Yes, you can do it on Desmos, but I feel like in general it's easier on the Inspire, and you can look at a table on the Inspire. So what we're going to do on the Inspire is we're going to go to Graph. Uh, what I would personally do is hit number one for new. We're going to make a new and then add a graph, number two. Okay, And so from here, we are allowed to type in our function. Remember, it could be x and it could be y, but in the calculator it says f of x equals. You do not need to retype y equals or f of x equals. Start after the equal sign. So for us, in example one, it was x squared. The squared button is right here next to the number four. Okay, and then it is plus four x. And minus, make sure you use minus, not negative, minus 5. Hit enter and you will see the graph. But to get more points, the best thing you can do is to go to the table control T. Control T, we've used it so much. I would write that down, control T. And I'm going to write it on our notes for us as well. Control T, the letter T. Okay. So... From here, we look at all the points that we could plot. Remember, keep in mind that some of these we can't plot because they're too big to fit on our graph. So I'm going to arrow up, 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 up. And you see how it goes from negative 8 in the Y column. It goes from negative 8 to negative 9 back to negative 8. That means that negative 9 in the middle is our vertex. So we should plot the vertex. And I'm going to write all these down. You should too. Okay, I would write them down also if I were you. So I'm going to write them down on my table, on my paper, and then we're going to graph them. So you can see here I've drawn the table on the right. And the most important part to me about this table is knowing that since the negative 9 is in the middle, that that's the vertex. You can see that there is a negative 8 on either side and then a negative 5 on either side of that. So that means since it's in the middle of all those values, then it's the vertex. So that's the most important point. Make sure that you plot it. Okay. So negative 2, negative 9. I'm going to go ahead and plot it. Negative 2, negative 9. Okay. And I'm going to plot the points on either side of it. Negative 1, negative 8, and negative 3, negative 8. Notice that they are symmetrical points on either side of that vertex. 0, negative 5 we already have because that was the y-intercept. And negative 4, negative 5 is also a point. So let's go ahead and we can also get the roots if we really wanted to. We can go back and look at the graph and if we went up just a little bit, see negative five is a root and one is a root, one zero and negative five zero. So I'm gonna add those to my table also. So I've written down my roots here at the bottom in black, one zero and negative five zero. You'll know their roots because the y values are zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and plot those as well. 1, 0, and negative 5, 0, and then I can graph the parabola pretty easily. Having at least five points is pretty important, and those important points really are the vertex, which I have highlighted there in yellow, and then the roots that we just plotted are also pretty important. And if it's in standard form, the y-intercept is also pretty important. Okay. 
Okay. Let's look at a few ways to do the two others that we have here. So we have our roots already plotted for this particular one. Um, so we just need a few other points to graph. So I'm going to go ahead and make my table over here. And I'm going to type this function into the calculator. Remember that the f of x equals is already in the calculator. So f of x equals, and then I type negative parentheses x minus 5. Make sure to put the minus and not the negative. Close the parentheses, open new parentheses, x plus 2, and close them. Hit enter and you've got your graph. And once again, control T will give you the table. So we can see here, there is no number between those 12s, which means our, our vertex is somewhere between those two. So, but we can plot some of our points, 0, 10, and 3, 10, negative 1, 6, and then its opposite point would be 4, 6. And then of course, 5, 0 is a root. Do we have another root? Negative 2, 0, which we had already plotted. So I'm going to write some of these down and we'll graph them. Okay, so I've recorded our points in a table. And remember, I got these straight from the calculator and now I'm going to plot them. Negative 2, 0 is already on there because it's a root and so is 5, 0, it is also a root. So I'm going to plot some of the other ones that I can plot, like negative 1, 6. And 0, 10. Hey, that's our y-intercept. There we go. 3, 10. And 4, 6. So you can see our parabola actually goes off the graph, and we don't actually see where the vertex is. That doesn't mean it doesn't have a vertex. Please keep that in mind. It does have a vertex. We just can't see it on this graph. If we really want to know, we can find it in the calculator as well. So we've got all our points there. Our y-intercept was at 0, 10. Something important to note. And let's go ahead and look at the calculator real quick and try to find that vertex if we can. Another way to find points, and specifically the vertex, is to use the trace function on your calculator. If you hit menu, and you go to number 5, trace, and then number 1, graph trace, I would write this down, menu 5, 1, It'll start off at the y-intercept, and you can see the coordinate down here in the bottom right-hand side, 0, 10. And let's arrow to the right. And we can keep going until we actually get to the vertex. And look, it even says the word maximum there. So it's right here on the bottom, 1.5 comma 12.3. So I would write that down as your vertex. Hey there. So you can see that I have labeled the vertex as 1.5 comma 12.3. And remember, if it ever asks you for the maximum, it's really asking for how high is it going. They only want one number, the y value. So the maximum is not the point. It is just the y coordinate of that point. Our maximum is at 12.3. Lastly, let's look at the vertex form, and I'm going to show you how to put it in the calculator. So let's go ahead and start typing in our function, just like we have been doing this entire time too. But in this one, keep in mind that you need to put the uh, squared on the outside of the parentheses. So I'm putting the x minus 5 in the parentheses and closing the parentheses and then hitting the squared button. And then minus 6. Make sure you're using minuses, not negatives for both of these. Hit enter. And you can use trace to get your points, remember guys, or you can use your table, control T. Remember, we already know one point is our vertex, which was at 5, negative 6. So I can get points around it, a few points before it and a few points after it. Notice I don't see any zeros in the Y column. And that reason is that we don't have a whole number roots. Our roots are probably decimals and not whole numbers. So let's go ahead and write these down and then plot them. Okay, so I'm going to go plot those points. We've got 7, 2. at the bottom you can see, and we also have 3, 2, 4, negative 4, 6, negative 4, and of course the vertex 5, negative 6, which we've already plotted, and we can graph it. Note, we do still have two roots, guys. We still have two x-intercepts, but they are decimals, okay? Please answer the two star type questions that are on the back of this page, and then raise your hand for your teacher to come check to see if they are correct. Use your graphing calculator to help you. Have a great day, guys.